everybody, this is Jim Rippey, pro snowboarder, and this is my story. me like it happened when I was on the top of my game I mean I was making a ton of money and uh, had every had accomplished almost every goal that a snowboarder could want to accomplish I you know had a pro model with Burton the biggest company in the world um, had a pro model with them for seven years I'd won a world title I'd won you know three vans triple crowns I'd won the biggest competitions in Europe and so I was like you know things were going great for me The lifestyle I was living was kind of carpe diem, seize the moment, seize the day. And that was the way I lived, you know, like I was making good money, you know, not millions and millions of dollars like some of the super rich people are, are making, but I mean, I made a few million dollars in my career. I had, I was making great money. I could go out and buy a Harley Davidson. I could go out and buy a nice car, buy a nice watch. And what I, what I got to experience was that those things were empty. You know, when you get something new, sure, you're excited about it for a little while, but it loses its newness really fast. And I started to realize that life was about relationship. And I think that was something God was showing me before I was a Christian, of like, hey, here's all the stuff the world can offer you. It doesn't mean anything. The most important thing is loving other people. As a kid, I did have a desire to, to just know if God was real. So I'd be like, God, if you're real, just send an angel to my room, let me know, you know? And um, obviously he never did. Um, at the age of probably like 15, 14, um, me and my dad would go to Santa Cruz to, to just go be near the beach. And um, he bought me a newly used surfboard. And so I went to this place called Sunset Beach. So I paddle way out in the middle of the ocean and my first wave that I catch, um, I get up and my leash is wrapped around both of my feet. So I fall forward off my board, my leash rips off, I get pounded and, and washed forward, my board gets washed back. And so I come up, I'm gasping for air, I get nailed by another wave, push down more. And so I, I come up and I finally get a breath and there's not another wave coming and I look up and my board's way out in the middle of the ocean and I'm just like, my dad's gonna kill me. You know, he just paid like 320 bucks for that surfboard and I lost it on my very first wave. And so I prayed, I go, God, okay, here's your opportunity. If you're real, bring my surfboard back to me and uh, a wave broke out in the middle of the ocean, way past where the sandbar was, where waves weren't breaking, and brought my board back almost two football fields right to my feet on the shore. And I picked up my board and I was just kind of like, eh, it's just chance. It wasn't until the age of 30 that I ended up getting saved. I was dropped off on a mountaintop, a helicopter flew away to go film a shot of another guy, and I had about an hour to just kind of hang out and, and just wait for my turn. And I started just kind of looking at how perfect everything was that was in front of me. I was looking at the run that I was about to do, and uh, you know, the, the powder snow was sparkling and just looking like diamonds, and I'm just like, that, that's so beautiful, you know, and I look to the right. I'm thinking to myself, this is a perfect run I'm about to go down. I look to the right, I see another perfect run. I look to the right of that, I see another perfect run. And it was just one of those times where I was kind of taken back by God's uh, creation. I looked up on the horizon line, and as far as I could see was just peak after peak after peak. And uh, I remember just praying like, Lord, I don't know if you're real, but if you are, you, sh you sure did a great job on this. And I just started seeing that everything that was around me was too perfect to be by chance. So I went and bought a Bible and I started reading from the beginning and I give Dave Downing a call and uh, he had just moved to Truckee. He moved into the area and I, um, I thought he was a Christian. 
that because I'd heard he was. He never talked to me about Christ, but uh, I called him and I said, hey man, I started reading the Bible and I want to go to church and check it out. So I went there by myself um, and sat in the back and I'm listening to the pastor preach. And we made eye contact and it was a trip because I was looking at him and I felt like I'd known him for my, I felt like I'd known him for a long time, the pastor. I'd never seen the guy before in my life. And, and he, we make eye contact and all of a sudden, it, it was probably just a glance of like maybe a half a second like staring at each other. But for me, it slowed down to where it was like five seconds where I'm staring into this guy's eyes and I remember kind of looking away because it made me feel uncomfortable. Um, and so that was one of the first things that started happening that was just kind of trippy. And then all of a sudden he opens up the Bible and he starts speaking the words of Jesus. He starts preaching out of the New Testament, which I'd never read because I was still in the Old Testament. I was probably, you know, 150 pages into the Old Testament or whatever. So he starts preaching the words of Jesus. And I knew every word that he said, like I'd read it a thousand times, like it was written on my heart, but I'd never read it. So I'm like, okay, I feel like I know this guy my whole entire life. I've never seen him before. He's tripping me out by staring at me and now he's speaking right at me and I know everything that he's saying to me like I've read it a thousand times but I've never read it. And I remember just being taken back by that and I closed my eyes and I thought, God, you must be real because I know I've never read this. I felt my heart swell with a joy and a contentment and a peace like I'd never experienced. And God was just reaching down and just touching me with his pinky, just going, Jim, I'm real. You're 30 years old and you don't know me yet. Today's the day you're going to know me. My initial reaction was I just started crying. And I'm sitting in church by myself crying, just tripping out like, God is real. God is real. This changes everything. I've always wanted to know if God is real and he's real. He's revealing himself to me now. And now I know that God is real. And I, I, I started bawling. I left. I went home. I opened my Bible and I started reading the New Testament. I started reading about Jesus. And what I started reading was reaffirming this experience I had just had about being born again. I read the story of Jesus talking to Nicodemus, who's a religious leader, asking Jesus, what must I do to get to heaven? And Jesus goes, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is going, how can I be born again? I'm a grown man. And Jesus goes, you know, you're a religious leader and you don't really get this. You won't be born again in the, spirit, or the physical sense, you'll be born again of the Spirit of God. And when you're born again, you'll have new desires. The Bible says that when you're born again, God creates a new creature out of you. He turns you into a new person and He gives you these new desires. And I'm like, that's what happened to me. That's what's just happened to me. And so the desires that I noticed standing out the most most to me were, um, I really wanted to, I, I was so excited about going to church. I wanted to go to church every week and I wanted to be in a Bible study. I remember like getting so excited to go and sit in a room with people and talk about God. That was not the old Jim Rippey. I mean, that was like, you know, the old Jim Rippey was going to focus on snowboarding and having fun and doing whatever. And the new Jim Rippey, uh, who'd been touched by the Spirit of God, wanted to read the Bible, wanted to do, go to Bible studies, wanted to go to church, wanted to tell people about the Lord. And and so, you know, that's that's how it happened. That's how I got saved. Just there and preached. Can you hear my sound? I'm bearing six feet down in the Sunday ground.